It wasn't hard. Do you know why? Because he filled me. He transformed me. My parents dropped off a demon-possessed, mentally unstable child and picked up John the Baptist with my camel skin and my honey and look. Well, maybe not. I get back. The first thing I said to you that happened is they spill my face. They beat me. They persecute me for the gospel. They throw tables and chairs at me. I have no intention of calming down. I'm 11. I've lived half my life. I have the answer. He's the answer. Even at 11, the boldness of the Ruach, when he enters your life, it's not about your age, it's about him. You will never be the same. Let me ask you a question. For when you received and chose to follow the King of Kings, let me ask you a question. Can I and can you see a change in your life? Or is it just the same old, same old? Answer it for yourself. Are you the same? If you are, you're a fool. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you prayed the prayer and got told when you're going through a tough situation and things were hard and you didn't know what to do, so you go along to a counselor and you say, I don't know what's happening. I don't hear God's voice. And I'm doing all this and I'm doing all that. And they say, it's okay. Remember the day you prayed the prayer. Didn't you write it in the front of your Bible? Let's turn to the front of your Bible. This is not scripture. This is something you wrote in the front of the Bible because someone said, you prayed this prayer, now you're born of the Spirit. That is not the seal of being born of the Spirit. The seal of being born of the Spirit is repentance when you turn around and you're not the same. Amen. There's people here tonight who are still the same, but now you just talk godly. Godly talk is not acceptable for his kingdom. I don't care if you memorize scripture. I don't care if you say the right words. I don't even care if you get the shakies and you stand up and prophesy out of your imaginations. I don't care. The question is, are you changed? Not did you wash your car every Saturday or Friday, preparation day. Are you changed, transformed? What does transformed look like? Let's think about this. Transformers in my car. Mm, hammer down the road. Next time you have a situation, I go from being a car to being a robot. It doesn't look like a car anymore. It's transformed. This is where the Father is calling us. What does it look like? What does it look like for you? What did it look like for me? I came back and there was no one could say that I was a heathen. There was no one could even go anywhere down that track. This is what the woman in the church said, the old grannies that could hardly hear when they're talking, and I overheard them. We overprayed for that, Kenny Russell. We've overprayed for him. <laughs> Because of what? I'm transformed. Where are the people that are transformed? We drive down the road with our windows up and we pay no attention to the world in which we live. We, we settle straight into society. We do everything that everyone else does. We've got the mortgage, the car payments, the job schedule, and we just do our stuff, and mind our own business. It is an affront to his kingdom for you to live that way. It's an affront. Every person who trusts in Yeshua is called to surrender their life. I'm not going to Africa. Maybe he won't send you to Africa. But you know what? You better find out why you're here. Do you want to get to that place where he says, away from me, you evildoer? I prophesied. I prayed for the sick and they got healed. I cast out devils. We did everything in your name. Yeshua, you have to accept me. He looks you in the eye and he says, away from me, you workers of iniquity, you lawless one without Torah. Get out of my face. If we don't hear this, 
We won't live his reality. We need to hear this and we need to hear it now. What do we want? Do we want to come together as a group and just say we're with a bunch of people that we associate with that have tassels on their clothes? They have beards like we have. They look like me. They act like me. These are my people. Is that what you're trying to live for? You are called to look like him, to walk like him, to be like him. What are we doing with the poor? What are we doing with the needs around us? What do we do when we're in the supermarket queue? Are we listening? Father, what are you saying to me? We have to get up off of our high knees and go and be who he's called us to be. We have to get up and make it our priority no matter what age we are and say, I live for you and now you inquire not of man, what does this look like? It's different for every person. You're not called to live my life. Don't try it. It'll kill you. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the price I've paid to be here today. I'm over prayed for, I'm overcooked, still eating bacon sarnies, <laughs> but seeking to do his will. This is what he told me when I'm 11, 12 years old. There's two things you must never have a problem with in your life as you grow up. This is the Ruach HaKadosh speaking to me as a child, not man telling me how I should live. He said, you must never, ever have a problem with my voice. Never. And you must never ever have a problem with my will for your life. You You must never have a problem with your will for my life. Why was Yeshua different? He taught out the same book as the Pharisees. Did the Pharisees have passion? You better believe they had passion. They were calling for the Messiah. Yohanan, John the Baptist, John the Mikvahist. You like my Hebrew? My Hebrew is really good. Shalom, manishma, mashlumek, mashlumcha. Okay, we're getting there, step by step. They come to John, are you the one or should we look for another? They are seeking the King of Kings. They're seeking the Messiah. When's the Messiah going to come? They know it's this season. Could it possibly be Yohanan? He says, I'm not the one. The one is coming after me. I'm called to prepare the way for the Messiah. That's my calling. Just watch me and you will see him. He turns and said, you brood of vipers, your father is Satan because you don't keep with repentance. We don't have the right preaching today. If you don't keep with repentance, your father's Satan. Do we want to hear that? What do we have to look like to receive this message? We get dressed up and we go out and we play the show. How many friends have I got in ministry that are involved in sexual relations with other women, messing their lives up, involved in hidden secrets of pornography and problems all over the place. It breaks my heart. Why can they do this? I'll tell you why they can do it. You know why? They don't know his reality. If you don't know him in the secret place, you can't help yourself in your sin. You have to know him in the secret place. The greatest part of your walk is not what's done in public. It's what's done in secret. What's coming out of your mouth when no one's looking? What do you do when someone stands on your toe, slams the brakes on in front of you? What comes out of your mouth? It's time to rise from slumber. It's time to wake up. It's time to realize that this is the day. Another sip, actually. I'll take a sip. Just got to make sure you're all listening. Y'all got your water? What time are we at? It's only nine o'clock. Plenty of time to go. It's time for us to rise up and be who he's called us to be. The only ingredient we must have is the ingredient of the secret place. 
When it comes to prayer, if you're part of this fellowship and you're not here, you are out of His will. You're out of His will. This place can't function without prayer because the community of the believers cannot come together without prayer. If there's a reason why you can't be here, you should be finding out how you get involved in prayer at other times within the week. And make sure that intercession and prayer is a major part of your life. It is the fuel. It's the only fuel He will give you to function. This is not religion. This is relationship. How do we commune with Him? We talk to Him. We listen. Prayer is not always talking. Do we have a set place in our home that when we wake up, that we seek Him? What's happened to our society today? It comes to dinner time. You know what we do? We throw out on trays, sit in front of the telly, kick your feet back, eat your dinner, and just carry on with your normal life. You know what? If that's what you do in your house, you need to change it. You need to change every element of your house. Get a table in your house and sit around a table at every meal with your family. Switch the television off and start focusing on who you are as a family unit to bring change. We need to have the manifestation also in the flesh as well as in the spirit. Why do we not have it? Well, our parents taught it. They didn't teach us the keys of dependency. We have split families. If you've come from a split family, I'm not coming against you. It's not your fault. I intercede and I pray for you. My wife comes from a split family. I know the pain. I know the hurt. I minister to people who are victims of divorce. This is not about getting beat up. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to de- make declarations so you can be free. It's okay. But don't be a victim of the past generation. Why? Because when you come to Yeshua, you're a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, all things are new. Is that your experience? If it's not, it needs to be tonight. Please do not leave this building without that being your experience. Please don't. We have so much split families in in the nations, in my country too. The devil wants to destroy the family units. Why? Because he knows how powerful the principles are and how the principles of the natural refer to the principles of the spirit and how we live. I'm sorry we're not called to stability Uh, in Yehovah. We're not. It's not called name it, claim it, build your mansion, chill out, and because you have everything and you're super blessed, that this demonstrates that you're super spiritual. No, it doesn't. I know tons of people that are super blessed and the most unspiritual Christians I've ever met in my life. Why? The reason they're super blessed is because they were only out for themselves. So don't think their blessing is confirmation of their spiritual walk. It's not. It's time for change. It's time to wake up. Dependence has been destroyed in this country. Why is the devil destroying dependence? Because he wants you out of sync when you come to what place? The next step, independence. When you get to independence, what happens in your life when you come to independence? We're taught this. You will stand on your own two feet. You will make your own decisions. I'm just checking my text. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's, <not. laughs> it's an iPhone. Why are you texting me? You shouldn't be texting. <laughs> There's something I'm trying to find here. Hold on, I'm getting there. Problem is I write so many notes when I'm... Uh... Here we go. This is the definition of independence today. This is what I heard from an 18-year-old. This is what an 18-year-old said on television in America. 
Independence speaks of your personal strength, you're strong enough, and you don't need anyone else. That's today's definition of independence. Does anyone have a problem with that? I have a problem with that. A huge problem with that. Let's go to the book of Judges as if we've not been through any judgment tonight. I'm not trying to judge. That's not the focus. The focus is that this is the day of transformation. Amen. It's the day of change. This is what the prophet is called to do. He's called to shake up your world. He's called to stir things up and make you pay attention to what the Father's saying because the only reason I'm traveling is that the alignment is out in the land. Yes. The alignment is out here. It's out in your life. And many... It's, it's, I have to go before the Father every day too. I'm not teaching you something I don't live. I'm not standing here saying, I'm preaching to me too. No, I live this. Amen. I live this. Judges chapter 6. One of the key things that we need to identify with in the life of Gideon is the Father is saying it's the day we are the John the Baptist of the second coming. We are called to prepare the way for the Messiah for the second coming. D do we all agree with that? Yes, we are called to prepare the way. Make straight paths for him. Amen. It doesn't say make any path in any way. No, make straight paths with him in accordance with what? With the Torah. Amen. That's what it's saying. Get your son worship out the roads yes, sir. and start coming to a place of serving him on the Shabbat. Yes. It's every day. Of course it's every day. But we still need to rest from our labor and come together on the Shabbat and be separated yes. from what's going on out there. Yes. The prophet gets sent to Israel because of what's happening with them, with the Midianites. Israel cries out to them. Everyone's crying out to Yahweh. They're crying out. When they go through a tough time, they cry out. When September 11th happens, they cry out, but for a moment. In Judges 6, verse 8, the father sends a prophet. Okay, I'm going to rescue you. No, wrong. You're awesome. You're the chosen people. You're blessed. Watch the gold coming up your driveways. I'm going to give you brand new chariots on lease purchase agreements, you know, so you can afford it. And I'm going to restore all your food. And you are just going to be the awesome children of Yehovah. You are just so special because I'm the prophet and I'm speaking. That's not what the prophet's bringing. Any prophet that you see that is telling you today, get ready for the best outpouring of his blessing today. Anytime you hear it, you must wake up and say, false prophets, this is the day of judgment. Amen. Amen. The blood is being shed. The families are being broken. The lies are being declared. And the body of Yeshua is asleep in the light. This is not the time for his manifestation of his glory. It's the time of us laying our lives down and recognizing when the prophet is speaking, he is bringing us in line with the scripture. So what? So that he may be glorified, not for you to be glorified, for him to be glorified. Do we want to see his kingdom come? There's only one place where we can change the mind of Yehovah. One, one place. If Yehovah chooses to bless someone, you can't change it. If he says, I'm going to bless this lady over here, there is nothing in heaven or hell or on the earth that's going to stop the blessings of the Father in your life. Because if he says that his word will not come back void, it will accomplish that for which it has been sent. But let me ask you a question. We have a mediator. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. What's his purpose? His purpose is to stand in the gap between us and the Father. Why? If he did not stand in the gap, you would not exist today. You would be dead. Because of his stand, you are here. He is interceding on your behalf. He is praying 
for you. We heard it tonight. Who's your prayer partner? Is your prayer partner Yeshua? He is interceding for you. Do you know him? Do you truly know him? Why is he interceding? Because you deserve wrath. I deserve wrath. Oh, but we've been told a sloppy grace message. We've been told, it's okay, you don't need to learn. Eat your bacon sandwich and your pork, pork picking, pig picking, and do whatever you like. The law is done away with. Just chill out. We're under grace. Everything's cool. Forget the Sabbath, you know. Just relax. Kick your feet up. It's grace. Just sit there. You don't need to study to show yourself approved by Scripture. We are called to test ourselves by this book. How do we weigh up? I don't care what man says how I weigh up. I choose not to be a fool. He who is a fool, he who lies to himself, is the greatest fool of all. We have nations filled with fools that have Bibles in their hands. And they're fools. They're foolish. It says you have subscribe to your foolish ways. We stand in pride. The Father saying, will you humble yourself and seek my face and pray and I'll heal your land. And everyone stops there. They don't talk about the restoration of the Torah. They don't talk about the importance of his law. What we don't need is 24-7 prayer centers all over the nation for wacko wackos. We don't need that. We just need people to be who they're called to be. We don't need the event. We don't need the program. Just get with the feast and get with his heart. I'm fed up. People call me up and say, they'd call me up in the early days and say, oh, we're, we're doing a million, uh, a million hours of prayer. Will you sign up to endorse it with your ministry? No! Why not? You're an idiot. <laughs> There's already millions of hours of prayer. Get lost. See you later. This is a marketing campaign for you to build your database. Bye. Oh, now we're doing a million hours of praise. Will you sign up for the million hours of praise? We're going to end it in a big stadium in Europe with thousands of people. And we're go this is going to be the churches coming together. No, get lost. See you later, alligator. I will not endorse you. You're just a marketing idiot. You didn't hear from God. It's the devil. Why? Because there's already a million hours of praise. Who's counting? You? <laughs> Who are you? You think the father's up there saying, oh, take it off. One million hours of praise. <laughs> just took place. Hey, angels. Hey, come and hear this. We just hit one million hours of praise today. What is wrong with our heads? 24-7 prayer houses and what's going on in their lives. That's right, That's right. They're all holy in the moment yes. and then they're screwing around yes. because it's under grace, sloppy grace. No accountability to who he truly is. The average is 40% of an average congregation in America is actively involved in abortion. And it's not just single girls. The average marriage that's involved in abortion has between five and seven abortions. It's not the Catholic Church. It's all done in secret. 125,000 babies are dying every month. And we want a 24-7 prayer center to bring His glory. Wake up, O sleeper! We want to run around and prance around in prophecy. Wake up. It's not the answer. The greatest word you'll ever receive doesn't come from man. It comes from him. Father, what are you saying? Okay. He said, the same God that conquered the grave lives in you. What does that look like? He conquered the grave. 
you know the problem we have today? The earth is calling out to Yehovah and saying, deliver me from this evil. These people are so vile. Deliver me from this evil. What's coming? Natural disaster after natural disaster, terrorism. The devil has so much legal right. Why? Because this nation is so entangled with Israel and trying to bring about lies in the Middle East. 